How come that idiot is rich and I'm not? That's today's episode. Let's dive into it. Hey everyone, I'm Clayton Morris, the founder of Morris Invest and the host of the Investing in Real Estate show. This is the show where we try to bring you financial education. We try to elevate your financial intelligence here because there's so many moving parts. And this is the stuff that we were never taught in school, right? All we were taught was how to balance a checkbook when we were growing up. That's it. So the vehicle that we use, that my wife and I use, is buy and hold real estate. That's the way that we've been able to achieve financial freedom. We know that we really want to help you achieve financial freedom. And I've got a great guest, one of my mentors, Met him years ago when I was still working in broadcast television, started really diving into his books and realizing that there was another way to build wealth. My guest is Robert Shimon. He is the author of How Come That Idiot is Rich and I'm Not, New York Times bestseller. He's written a number of other books on real estate investing. He buys basically the same exact properties that I do in those B and C neighborhoods as part of his portfolio. And what I love about Robert is that he's an active investor. He does it every day. And in fact, he said, hey, Clayton, let's talk next week. Let's talk about some deals. Let's talk about some different things. So we're going to jump back on the phone next week and just talk strictly about deals. Robert, welcome back to the show. Great to see you again, Clayton. How you been? I've been great, my friend. I've been great. And I think you might, you know, it's kind of like when you look at like David Letterman's show, when he had like certain guests like Bill Murray that were on a number of times. I think going back and looking, I think you might be, this might be your fourth or maybe even fifth time here on the show. So I love having you on the show. Welcome back, my friend. And I remember Fox backstage when we weren't on air, like, hey, so this rental stuff, I got a deal doing, what do you, does it work? What do you think? I'm like, yeah, let's, <laughs> yeah, great, go. And I tell people nothing going on with the rent, but I, you know, people think because you write books or do a podcast, you don't do investing, like, you know, and I have, I have nine closings this week. All right, brother. I love it. I love it. I think uh, I think I might have beat you by one. I think I've got ten this week. See, we're actively doing deals, and then next week Robert will have twenty, and I'll have seven. You know, so that's how it works. God, if somebody said you would have had ten closings in a week or ten days, what would you have thought? Like, that's impossible. How could somebody buy, you know, ten nine houses in, in ten days? It's insane. amazing. Well, you know, so many people get emotional about real estate, right? And so they they. You know, I always say, think about when you have 50 properties. Are you going to be really up late at night worried that you had an eviction or that a squirrel got in some duct work on one of your properties? No. If you've got like you, I don't know how many properties you have now. What, like 600, 800? Uh, you know, the good answer is I don't know because it's moving all the time. And that's right. where you want to be, you know. Someone once said if you know exactly how much money or wealth or real estate you have, you don't have enough. <laughs> right. And we create this sort of artificial emotion and anxiety about things like this, right? You know, not knowing uh, well, we've got an eviction. Well, that's part of the process, right? That's part of the real estate process. You get a violation letter in the mail. That's part of the process, right? If you if you want to be in the game, you've got to have skin in the game. Yeah. I tell people, please show me any business where there's no problems. If you can find one, I'm in. If you own a restaurant, there's going to be customers that aren't happy. You got employee doesn't show up. If you're whatever, I mean, think of your own corporate job, business job. There's politics stuff, and the beauty of it is, we think they're big problems, but they're really not. And uh, you know, when I tell people with the rental property, you know this because you help people get good rental properties. Is what's going on? Nothing but the rent. The rent keeps coming in. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, whether you're asleep, whether you're you know, sure there's ups and downs and things happen, but you know, if you have a you're diversified a bit with a few properties. Um, you're in a, it's an investor mentality. The rent keeps coming in. It's awesome. And what I love about you, we've talked before about sort of lower cost properties. When people have this idea that you have to spend three hundred thousand dollars on a residential piece of property. You know, I buy three bedroom, one baths all day long, and they're in that fifty k range. You know, and and when I'm all done with them, um, you buy in the same neighborhoods that I do. That's part of your main portfolio and cash flow. Before bread we got, uh, yeah, go ahead. It's the bread and butter. You yeah. know. Done some higher end properties, uh, you know, and I tell people there's Dollar Store, there's Tiffany's, there's Cartier, there's Walmart, Kmart, and they all make money. There's right. Waffle House and Ruth Chris. <laughs> right. And why shouldn't you own all of them? Right. You know, that's, yeah. <laughs> and there's no right or wrong, but I love the bread and butter stuff. You know, there's a lot more Walmarts than Cartier and Tiffany's. <laughs> so before we dive into your book, I want to, we're going to talk about, I really love this idea. We've, I get so many emails from people that kind of basically say the same thing as your book title, which is, you know, how come that idiot's rich and I'm not? I'm, try I'm trying everything, Clayton. I, you know, I, I just, the only thing they haven't really tried is getting their mind right and actually start investing in real estate. They've tried everything else, you know, all the, you know, 401k and everything. So before we get there and kind of dive into your book and go through a bit of a framework to help people and think, think, get their head straight, where do you see the current real estate market shaping up? You're buying in the same neighborhoods that I am. Um, where do you see things going? Well, you're not going to like my answer. I get that question about five times a day. 
Um, there is no real estate market. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, there is no stock market. It's an illusion. Good answer. What part of the real estate market? You know, we're in Indianapolis, Detroit. Uh, I do deals in Atlanta. Uh, right now I'm in Las Vegas where I've done deals. Which market? There's commercial A, commercial B, commercial C. There's new construction, old construction, low income, moderate income, section A. Um, you know, and I will answer your question, uh, but I do deals, not markets. You know, I'm an right, investor. Right. And my focus is do a deal. You know, I know right now there's probably people listening to your great show going, man, if I could just figure out this market, when the right time or the right city or the right country or the right moment, there is none. There's and they're always, never gonna and they're never gonna jump in. It's like the person that's waiting for the best computer to buy, right? They're like, Oh, should I buy that new MacBook? There's a new one every, you know, eight months now. <laughs> Get right. a phone. Just buy it because guess what? There's gonna be a new iPhone next year. That is a great analogy. I'm going to wait for that. The best computer comes out. I'm going to wait 20 years. So, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, there's always a deal. You know, it's below market. It cash flows. My question is, why would not buy that deal? I mean, there's uh, about six million residential real estate transactions this year in America. All you have to do is two or one or five. Right. Or you do 50. Right. And so I don't do markets. I do this. Now, that being said, you've got to know your what I call micro market. Correct. Right. You got to know what the rents are, what the values are, what's going on in that neighborhood or jobs coming or going. So, you know, we don't just buy a deal. We, you have to do your research. But uh, now the general macro real estate market. Listen, if I knew exactly what was going to happen, uh, I'd be running a 50 trillion dollar hedge fund. Right. <laughs> Correct. Right. Because you know, all real estate is truly local. So what happened in Miami, what happened, frankly, in Las Vegas, what happened in San Francisco had nothing to do with what happened in Indianapolis during the downturn. You know, well, it, totally different. I'm on the beach in Miami. My property on the beach never went down. Now, Midtown Miami went down 30 percent uh, during the crash. I do deals in Nashville and Memphis where I'm from Nashville. Memphis really never went down. They weren't affected by the global U.S. Uh, meltdown uh, in 2007 or 8 or whatever it was. So, again, uh, there's so much misinformation about that. And that being said, you know, I spend a lot of time and money like you do because I love this stuff because it's distracting. You know, it keeps us busy from not doing a deal. Let's read economic reports on the future of real estate. But I love it. And I'll tell you this, the millenniums. This is the largest generation to come through, even bigger than the uh, generation after World War II. They're starting to buy houses, right? They're renting. There's a lot of them. Supply and demand. And here's the biggest thing, Clayton, that people don't realize. The number one reason real estate has gone up in the last 23 years in America, not according to me, according to the Harvard MBAs, PhDs, is government regulation. Think about it. Right. 50 years ago, your, your parents rolled into Ohio. Uh, they bought some land. They could build whatever they want to build, pretty much. There were no rules. Now, to build a new house or duplex in anywhere, the restrictions, the, the green laws, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. And that's restricting a lot of supply. I believe, as always, there's going to be bumps. Over time, real estate always goes up. Rents go up, right? Some costs go up. And the question is, is uh, how much do you want to get? Um, I wish I would have bought everything 20 years ago. Everything, Right. Yeah, I mean, and you, you and I are in some of the same neighborhoods. You know, I love Detroit. It was my first markets. And, you know, what's amazing about Detroit is, um, and I was just there visiting my team and walking through like 50 or 60 of our rehabs in progress. And what I love about it is, you know, yes, the values might have dropped a little bit, 10, 15,000 during the downturn. But guess what didn't drop was the rents. They stayed the same you know, and guess what? Now those values are back up again. And so, but again, who cares, right? Because that value going up and down, it doesn't really matter. But the rents stayed consistent. I don't know what's happened next year in every little market, but I know over the next five, 10 years, it's going up. I'm not selling next year. Right. I'm a, landlord, a rental. Uh, the rent's coming in. The tenants are paying my debt off. I'm getting tax benefits for owning. And you know, what's funny. This is so important about how can that is rich or not. There's two types of decision you make. Emotional, right? Or economic, rational. I'm an investor. You're an investor. I'm a numbers person. No emotion. When people, we say Detroit, I just, I could hear it. The people listening to the podcast, watching, going to Detroit, oh my God, gangs, fire, bankruptcy, disaster. And as an investor, I'm, I'm thinking Detroit, number one or two best real estate marketing in the United States last year. Right. right? Great cash flow. Right. Correct. Uh, their government's got it together. There's now a little tech boom going on and jobs boom going on. But people watch the media, no disrespect to the media, and think, oh, Detroit's horrible. No, nope. well, it's a big city. And there I, are some parts that aren't great, but there's right. like any parts that are amazing. No, that's such a great point. And 
I love, frankly, it allows me to get more deals with the ignorance that's out there and, you know, about Detroit, right there, you know? And so I, I, uh, I, I love I, it. I actually love the ignorance about it. Yeah. The, the herd. I mean, and most people's information comes from the media, which is just all, um, you know, it's, it's just not accurate. There's not facts. And I've done some deals in Detroit, best investing market of the last couple of years. The, the, it's coming back, the, uh, you know, again, you got to know what you're doing. Uh, correct. Right, yeah, Quick and, Quick and Loans just moved there. Um, we got a billion dollars from Chrysler Fiat there. You know, I asked this question on the podcast, how many people think know what the number one industry in Detroit is? And most people say the auto industry. No, it's healthcare. And the auto industry is secondary. And then you have all, you have Google, Facebook, all of these other companies moving there because of the, 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 the benefits. And because, uh, because Detroit has now made it a tax incentive for people to move into the city, their paychecks are going up. So people are actually leaving the exurbs, the suburbs way out, and they're moving into that area. And guess what? They're renting from me. <laughs> I love it. But I, I got to really warn people, you know, get rid of that emotion and get the facts right. as an investor. Um, if, you have, if you're all emotional about it or psychological, you're not going to make any money. And also, I would say, and I'd add to that too, which is get off the internet, stop hanging out with naysayers, you know, get the facts, but don't let it crush you. Don't let it cause analysis paralysis where you never actually take action to do a deal. And by the way, intelligence, you need somebody on the ground. I love the internet. Um, I don't use it. Uh, most super successful investors I know don't use it. Right. <laughs> exactly. I mean, they look at something or a picture or whatever, 80% of the information on there is incorrect. Right. That's a great point. That's an absolute great point. I want to dive into your book now. And, you know, this framework that we're talking about here, this idea of how come that idiot's rich and I'm not, the idea is, you know, you ask the question, have you ever really wondered why some people attract wealth and others don't? They stay financially sort of tapped out in debt or they have their whole frame of references around a debt lifestyle. So let's kind of go through this. How do we set a success goal? That's one of the key parts of the book is having that one focus. And most people don't do that. You know, I tell people that in the book, there's two goals you need. One, what's my big goal? And my, my mentor walked me through this, just like you probably do with some of your people. I said, um, I need $5,000 a month coming in from rental property. And I don't care how long it takes me to get it, but that will get me at that time financially free. Remember, I was kind of a broke, uh, miserable in Nashville, not LA or New York, you know, where $5,000 a month gets you a parking spot. Right. <laughs> you know, right. It's all relative. And um, so I work backwards. What's your big goal? What's financial freedom? Where do you want to be? How much money do you want to come in? And I break it down into deals. If I'm making $600 a month from a rental property, I need uh, 10 of those. That's it. Um, and, and really work backwards. Know your numbers. And then the second most important goal, which is what most people forget about, is goals are great, but most of them we never reach. What am I going to do today or this week to reach my goal? I need to make five offers next week or look at three houses or close on one property in the next 60 days or find some money or what action am I going to take? That to me is the most important goal. Right. And when I say right. I don't mean someone who's just dumb. What I mean is most people, including me, complicate things. Mm -hmm. I thought about real estate for about two years before I ever made an offer, analyzed everything of fear. And when I say rich idiot, most of them are pretty simple. Well, I need this much money. I need to buy this. How do I do it? What do I do today? Let me go do something. They're doers. They're not thinkers. And I think those are the two goals you need. What's the big goal? Where do I want to be 5, 10, 15, 20 years? And the second most important goal is can I block two hours next week or 30 minutes and make a few calls, make an offer, look at a property, get movement of some sort and not think, wonder, worry, analyze, hypothesize, skepticize, negativize, intellectualize, research eyes, which most people including me do for years and never do anything. Right. Oh, I talk to investors all the time when they call our office and looking to get started. They're like, I've been, I've been thinking about this for two years. I'm like, my God, that's yeah, two years. I've talked to 20 companies. Have you ever made an offer? No, no, <laughs> but I'm, I'm, I'm working on it. Right. And I did it. I'm so passionate. I don't know if you did it. I spent a year and a half. My mentor told me what to do. He showed me tons of great deals. You probably show people great deals like, well, it's not the perfect deal for me right now. I can't do that one. There is no perfect deal. Do something. Get your first deal done. That's the hardest deal. It, it took me a year and a half to do it. After my first time, I'm like, this is not that bad. 
This is easy. Let me do another one. <laughs> right. I mean, the fear goes out the window once you take action, right? You know, fear is just sitting there waiting for you. And once you actually move as a forward arrow towards your goals, that just starts to peel off. It just starts to shed and fall off. You know, um, I, I was the same way. It took my sweet time. But then I, I became like a dog with a bone. Once I saw, I'm like, I'm, I'm going to go after this. I'm going to go after this. My first two properties are in Detroit, you know, and I, it just, they've been consistent for me ever since, you know. Yes, I've had a tenant turnover. Yes, I've had to it, replace a soffit. But who cares? Well, it's cost to any business cost. But here's what's funny, and, and I didn't think about this. I used to work 50 hours a week at restaurants to make $30,000 a year, maybe. You wow. know, double shift, wow. 30 grand. You know, most people work 40 to 80 hours a week to make whatever they're making. And then people won't spend five hours a week to do one real estate deal. And you know this, if you buy it right, you can create 10, 20, 30,000 dollars of wealth over the next 10 years, the tenants pay off, it's grand, 50 grand, making cash, cash, and tax, cash tax benefits. And they're like, and they're oh, like, I don't have the time for that, that's just too crazy. crazy. You wouldn't spend three to five hours trying to make that 20 to 50 grand, and you're spending 60 hours a week working a job you don't like. That right. makes no right. sense to me. Well, I love the idea. Well, I love the idea. Focusing on Focusing your on. on your act, you know, on these two goals, what can move me forward? Because if you don't write it down, put it up on your whiteboard, put it on your vision board. Just keep a little notebook. Like I keep a little notebook right here, you know, on my desk, and I have the, my sort of daily goals. What are those one or two things? Michael Hyatt, the great Michael Hyatt, has a really great book called The Focus Planner, and he helps you kind of every day. What are your big three goals? You know, uh, what are your big three goals that you can move forward? All the other stuff is ancillary, but what are the big three things that you need to bite off to make sure that you're buying that first property like uh, like Robert said one of the other things you talk about in the book is playing while your money goes to work and I love that idea and you think about well why do I have to wait till I'm 70 to start enjoying the life that I know that I want yeah and I think we're brainwashed I mean I was brought with a great parents by like you I don't know about you my parents and grandparents work really hard mm -hmm. they're stressed out they're like listen don't take vacations you know, when you're 60 or 70, if you save money and work really hard, then maybe you can go down to Florida for a couple of weeks or whatever you're into. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Um, as a lot of people know better, I mean, life is shorter than you think. I'm going to, I'm going to work, you know, it's effort, any business you're in, but I'm going to have fun now. Right. I'm going to live where I want to live. I'm going to invest where I want to invest. I'm going to do what I want to do. And people think it costs a fortune and it really doesn't. Uh, I'm not saying just go blow money and don't work, but enjoy life. Um, I uh, live in Miami Beach. I'm like, why work 50 weeks a year to spend a week or two somewhere I want to be, like a beach or sunshine or wherever you're, whatever you're into? I'm going to live there now. Um, now with the internet and FaceTime, you can invest anywhere. <laughs> look right. at profit anytime. I mean, look at us right now. We're talking to each other. Uh, you're up there up north. I'm in Vegas at a big investor summit. It doesn't matter where we are. Correct. Right. You can do it. And I think that you bring up a great point, which is also in the book, which is about connecting with high net worth individuals. And I'm always, you know, flattered by the people that write to me or write to our team or, you know, reach out and they're saying, you know, I I'm starting this and I just need some advice here or we'll do live Q&A shows on our YouTube channel. So we'll do like a live stream and people jump in and they ask all si kinds of you know insightful questions. But, you know, you got to get out there. You've got to connect with people who are doing deals. Um, how do you feel about that? Dive into that a little bit because so many people surround themselves. I've said, I did a whole podcast episode called stop surrounding yourself with losers. <laughs> so it's hard to be blunt, but it's true. You know, people just, you know, they'll, they'll surround themselves with losers who've never done a deal, who have no idea how to build wealth. And they're talking this person out of taking action and buying real estate. So this is interesting. I uh, go around the world and find the best coaches, probably like you do, always reading, learning. And I met with these uh, group in uh, Israel who are like top in the world on behavior. And they said the number one determinant of your behavior, which is exactly what you said, these are the PhD psychologists, best coaches in the world. They said it's who you're around. And, you know, when I was uh, younger, I was around a lot of broke beer drinkers. Mm -hmm. And guess what I did? drank beer and was broke and we were, we were really good at it. Right. And you take anybody and you put them around people that are doing real estate or investing or have an investor mentality or millionaires and what's going to happen just by osmosis being around them. So what you said is so key. So you've got to get out of your comfort zone, whether it's on the phone, on a podcast, on an internet, go to your local real estate investor group and say, who's doing deals? 
because the number one reason you won't do a deal is you will talk, which I did to my mother, who can bake a great casserole, has never done a real estate deal, <laughs> my brother, who's never been an investor, my best friend, who's never been an investor, and say, I'm thinking about investing. They're like, oh, that doesn't work. You can't do that. Right, or you'll surround your, or you'll reach out to the one person you know that bought one property one time and got burned because they didn't know what the heck they were doing or they just did it all wrong. And then that's that one colored perception of of real estate investing. That one guy who bought that one single family that had the nightmare tenant and then that's it. They just got out. They just they couldn't handle it. They were wimps. I'm going to give you a real secret here. I hired a mentor. A guy had had 120 properties and he changed my life. But he said this to me, and this is free for everybody. Once a week or every two weeks, go to LinkedIn, go to your local real estate group, uh, call around and ask somebody who's doing what you want to do, a landlord or landlady who has 10 or 20 or 30 properties or a rehab or whatever you're into and take them to coffee or lunch. And I was broke. I literally would call them and say, hey, um, Clayton, I hear you're an investor. I'm just getting started out here in Nashville. I hear great things about you. Listen, I'd love to take you to lunch for 30 minutes. I'd like to see if I can help your business anyway, find out about what you're doing. By the way, I'm just getting started out, so I'll buy you lunch as long as they have a drive through <laughs> <laughs> Because I know – or coffee, you know, that's about it, you know. And, and most people are lonely. You know, there's not a lot of people doing this really. And, you know, not everybody was super nice, but 90% were like, oh, my God, thanks. You know, let's go have lunch or coffee. How'd you get started? What can I help your business with? And to this day, those are some of my best money partners, best investors, best deal people, and we're still friends. I mean, a little quick story. I totally agree with you. When I was just getting started out, wanted to work in television and, and radio, and I was you know, obsessed with David Letterman. I would sneak downstairs and watch TV or watch Letterman when my parents thought I was in bed, and I was obsessed with stand-up comedy. And so I reached out to the local guy who ran the comedy club in Reading, Pennsylvania, David Stein. He also was the morning broadcaster of the Mike and Dave Morning Show, and so he had the comedy club in town. He had the radio show, and I reached out to him. <laughs> And I went to his comedy club and I said, hi, you know, I'd love to learn from you. Can I take you out to lunch? And we became best friends. He, I started doing stand-up comedy at his club. He had me on as his intern on the radio show and went off to University of Pittsburgh. And that launched my broadcasting career, thanks to that, by just me reaching out to him. You know, what, what's the worst thing I'm going to say? No? So, again, it's not what you know, it's what you do. To this day, once every week, I take a new investor somebody in my business and I call them and say, let's have coffee or lunch. And imagine if you did that and let's say only did 40 weeks a year, what you'd learn, who you'd be around, but only get advice from people who are doing what you want to do. Most people will tell you that you can't do it because they've never done it. They don't own five or 10 or 20 properties. They, they don't know how to do it. So please, what you said is so important. Be careful who you talk to. And on the internet, I ask people, Hey, did you have a positive experience at a restaurant or movie? Did you go post something on the internet? They're like, no, most people on the internet only post negative stuff who've never done anything. Exactly, exactly. Most people, like, it's true. We, I mean, we, we, we don't really ever write a review when we're happy. You know, the other day I was stuck on an airline flight going to Detroit, actually, to meet with my team. And it was a seven-hour delay on the tarmac in a snowstorm, oh. massive snowstorm in Newark. And the United team was amazing. Um, they brought us back to the gate. We had a de-ice twice. They let us out. They said, you know, we're, you know, we're, we're trying to get updates from the tower. They've closed all these runways. They were fantastic. And I tweeted it. I said, you know what? Most people use Twitter to say negative stuff. I'm just, I just want to tell everyone how amazing the United staff was, the pilot, the whole crew. People don't do that. They go to Twitter to complain. They use the internet to complain and write negative reviews. That's why they use the internet. Right. And even this podcast, people love it. They're learning stuff. Go on there and say something nice. No one ever does it. Right. Yeah, please go to iTunes. Leave, me a, <laughs> leave uh, Robert and I a five-star review for this episode. It's, it's easy yeah. to do and, and helps other people discover and gain financial intelligence. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I really appreciate that. Um, you got to be so careful who you're around. Mm -hmm. um, that's the number one determinant of your success. And, and these folks are about drug addicts. Like they get people off drugs. They put them around people who aren't on drugs. And within a few weeks or months, they just get off drugs because no one else is doing it. Same with money. Same with wealth. Same with exercise. Same with health. And, you know, you got to get out of your comfort zone. And, and we're not telling you lose all your friends. And, you know, it's funny. Most of my negative people in my life have the same last name as me. I don't know how that worked. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's it's hard. You know, you got a negative family. You got It's hard. But I limit who I'm around and what I'm going to listen to. And I don't talk to my family about money because like that doesn't work. And, you know, we're broken, miserable, and you need to be broken, miserable too. you know, get a job. 
My family still thinks I should quit real estate and go get an office job so I'll have health insurance. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. No, I had a negative employee one time. You know, every time he wanted to talk, it was just negativity. And I said, look, you know, you don't need to worry about the things that I should be worrying about as the owner, right? Be a forward arrow. I hired you to be a forward arrow. Don't and leave. If you're going to call me, I don't want to hear the anxiety. I don't want to hear the stress. Let's be forward thinking. Um, one of the things you talk about, we'll wrap it up with this is in the book, you talk about having a millionaire mentality while you're becoming one. And I think that's so important because I don't think people have a fear of failure. I think some people do. Most people, I think, have a fear of success, and they sabotage themselves while they're becoming successful. It's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Nobody talks about that. Thank you for bringing that up. Listen, I come from a very, you know, not so wealthy family background, and when I started making money, it was very uncomfortable. They made me uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable, correct? Right. And nobody ever teaches that. Now, I'm not trying to flaunt your wealth and throw it in people's faces, but you got to be around successful people and... Uh, get that mentality now you will become what you uh, uh, want to be right when I was worried stressed out about money all the time focused on how broke I was that's what I got mm -hmm. correct yeah and this is you know people talk about it but they don't do it the, the mind shift right you, you know you got to, uh, as a, a sports person you have to visualize yourself being successful winning uh, becoming uh, the winner of the race or whatever and I talk to athletes, they visualize themselves, you know, winning the race, having the best start, the best catch or whatever. Musicians, you have to visualize yourself playing the concert, uh, being a successful or whatever it may be. Same with wealth and money. And you got to start treating yourself better. And I think the most important thing, and uh, this is very simple but very key, is watch your language. Listen to how the people are talk. I'm broke. The economy's bad. There are no deals in uh, in America. There's no deals in California, right? And whatever you say, you're right. And mm -hmm. the money will be coming to me. I will be. I am closing deals. I am finding deals. I uh, am successful. I will be making a lot of money. I will be enjoying life. I feel good. This. Is, I'm excited, not scared. I'm excited about making an offer, not scared about making an offer. There's no risk in making an offer generally. Right. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. So I love that. You become that, that mentality. And I started treating myself a little better. It doesn't cost much money. I go to better hotels and better restaurants for a few extra dollars. And all of a sudden, I'm meeting wealthier people, people that are doing things. And it just it snowballs. But if you're around, I'm broke, I'm miserable, everyone around me is broke and miserable, well, that's what you're probably going to get. So you've got to change your language, change your mentality, treat yourself better. And you know you deserve it. Why not? And here's the other thing. Nobody really cares about what you're doing. <laughs> you think they do? They right. don't. When I was broke and miserable, nobody really cared. People really don't care what kind of car you drive or where you go. So do what you want to do. Enjoy yourself. Really, people, they're all on their own planet. They really don't care so much. And, um, you know, if you want to help people around you, be successful. Do it. Don't talk about it. And that will bring everybody up. Oh, absolutely. And everyone will say, hey, man, what is what has Robert been doing lately? He's he's happy. He's yeah. he doesn't have a day job. He's just financially free. I want some of that. And that's exactly. And yeah, that's what we try to teach people here. It's so funny. Most of my family who are very negative now, they're like, you know what, Robert, we were so glad you did real estate. We supported you at the beginning. Remember that? And uh, by the way, can I borrow 80 grand from you next uh, month or whatever. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. They come out of the woodwork. Yeah. Uh, well, supporters now but you know be the person you want to be be around the, 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 the what you said was key be around those people you know uh, and and just start snowballing um and conversely when you're depressed or and i've been there or, or bad things happen or you're broke that snowballs too yeah absolutely it does excellent wisdom and i'd love to have robert we'll have you back on soon to talk to some more great real estate topics this book though for robert is called how come that idiot's rich and i'm not you've got to go download it we'll have links to it on our website at morrisinvest.com on the podcast page we've got tons of great resources over there so come on over we'll grab the we'll have a link to robert's book that you can buy and check it out and uh it is a new york times bestseller robert great to see you my friend and let's yeah let's chat great. next week let's talk some deals and the goal is pretty soon, it's already happened to you and it will happen to some of your uh, followers. Uh, they'll look at them and say, how come that idiot's rich and I'm not? That's the goal. <laughs> exactly. I love it. I love it. Robert, always great to see you, my friend. Enjoy the conference down there and uh, we'll catch up real soon. Great. Have a great day. Great evening. See you soon. Happy investing. 
happy investing and taking action. Thanks, Robert. And thanks to all of you for subscribing and downloading the podcast. We really appreciate it. Please, like Robert said, just come on over to the iTunes store if you're listening to it on audio or if you're you know, uh, on, on YouTube. Just go over to the iTunes store and leave a nice, kind review if you would be so kind and share this with a loved one that you think is uh, being a little negative and uh, has an old way of thinking about money because I think you could really change people's lives just listening to Robert's wisdom and others. We'll see you back here next time with another episode. Now go out there, take action, become a real estate investor, and stop hanging out on the internet.